In this I should be writing, we're going to be talking about whether I am invincible or not. I don't feel like I am. But it's I should be writing. Season 19, episode 15. Well, I should be writing. I should be working on my Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is a podcast for wannabe fiction writers, and I am your host, Mer Lafferty. So I usually start the show with a little discussion about what I've been up to, and I am pleased to announce I turned in my Chaos Terminal copy edits. They weren't that bad. A lot of commas to deal with, and a lot of con- con- continuity errors, excuse me. But I got them in. And now I'm just trying to work on my own stuff for a little while. I'm taking a course in comedy screenwriting, and this was something I hesitated to do because it's kind of expensive, but it includes a one-on-one script discussion with the teacher, which I thought was probably worth the money. I worry that my when I try to apply things I learn academically to my writing, I kind of freeze, and I know I can write a story, but I think I can't say, okay, I'm going to put a fool in this place. I'm going to put a mentor in this place. For some reason, that just makes me freeze. And so I write the characters that are in my head, and a lot of times, first draft, they're not very interesting. So I'm hoping I can get the concept of the different characters that play off each other. And if you don't like archetypes... I'm telling you, look at all the best ensemble-type stories. You're going to have a fool. You're going to have a sarcastic one. You're going to have the mentor. You're going to have the oblivious one. It's it's just... They're there. You're going to have the contagonist, which uh, not a lot of people talk about. It was mentioned in my screenwriting class, and I forgot what it was called. But I caught, I got the term from Tracy Hickman, who says the contagonist is not necessarily an antagonist, but they kind of stand in the way of the protagonist. And if you want, the way I always think about it is, and of course, I'm showing my age here. If you were a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Cordelia was a contagonist. Cordelia hated Buffy, but because Buffy's conflicts were almost always supernatural, and Cordelia did not want the town to fall into the hellhole. You know, she believed in what Buffy did. She just didn't like Buffy, and so there are times when she gets in the way or stops Buffy from getting something minor than she wants, that she wants, like a B-plot or something. So right now, my goal is to write three pitches for uh, either a pilot or a screenplay, and I'm going to need to think about it in terms that I learned on Saturday, and I'm kind of scared, but I got to do it. My good news is I got the copy edits turned in. Very relieved at that. I have no good news from you guys. If you have any, please email me, mightymer at gmail.com. And remember, we celebrate rejections because rejections are on the path to being published. They're rocks on the path. They don't feel good, but they're there. And if you just accept it as part of your path to becoming a writer, a working writer that sells stories, you might be able to handle it better. I've kind of gotten to where if I do my absolute very best to get something to do something, then the rejection doesn't hurt as much because I don't get that feeling of, oh man, I just really flaked and screwed off and didn't do everything I could. So that could have been, that could have ended a different way. But no, if I put everything I can into what I'm trying to sell or win or whatever, then it's easier to move on. 
I feel like sometimes we treat our work like hot potatoes. Like once we're done, we get panicky and we start throwing it out to people. We don't want to hold on to it too long. And maybe that's because we'll worry that we'll convince ourselves not to send it out or we'll start editing and never stop. Or you're worried that someone might find the story on your uh, device and read it without your permission and critique it. There was a AITA post on that about a guy who went into his girlfriend's computer, found some fanfic she'd written years before, and told her how it was wrong. <laughs> and he wants to know if he's the jerk or not. Everyone says yes. Yes, you are, for so many reasons. But I digress. So far, Team Rejection 2023 has over 100 reje rejections, and it's in April now. So I'm just absolutely thrilled for you guys. You're awesome. But what I wanted to talk about was invincibility. I've been doing the artist's way uh, finding water. I stumbled a bit, and I had some travel and some stress in there and didn't make my morning pages or the chapter reading a priority. So kind of fell to the side there. Strangely, I did do writing. I wrote something new and I wrote and I worked on my copy edits, but I didn't do the journaling that I've been thinking I need to do for my mental health. But anyway, the last time I read something in Finding Water, something really, really struck me. And I've said, you know, nobody can stop you from writing but you. But apparently Pablo Picasso said it much better, which was, I'm invincible. I, I don't have the quote right in front of me, because that would have been preparing. But I'll always remember it. It's, as an artist, I'm invincible. And if you lock me away in prison or a concentration camp, I will draw in the dust with my tongue. And that's a pretty visceral image. But he's absolutely right. You can't control whether your story sells. You can't control if you get an agent. You can't control if you become a self-pub phenomenon or even sell more than 10 copies. You can't control any of that. You can do things to support it. You know, don't self-publish something with a crappy cover. Make sure that your agent letter is perfect. Things like that. But you cannot make anybody do anything. What you can do is work on your stories. You could tell stories. And nobody ever can stop you doing that. And that is empowering. And it's also a little frightening. Because... I don't know about y'all in different in other countries, but something about America is there's not a lot of uh, personal responsibility ha happening here. You always have to find somebody to blame. But when it comes to creating, when it comes to making something from nothing, no one can stop you and you are responsible for it. Which means if you do stop telling stories... You've stopped yourself. And that's fine. I haven't talked about this in a long time, but if you want to quit, that's your prerogative. And you know, good on you for giving it a try before you quit. Because there's a lot of people out there who have never tried and never will. But at least you tried. And made the decision to quit. But again, that was your power at work. You had the power to stop yourself, so you stopped yourself and decided to do something else. But if it comes to telling stories, you either let yourself do it or you don't. And it's, it's humbling and it's frightening. I don't feel like a powerful person. In fact, lately I've been feeling quite unpowerful. And I can't decide if this is a good empowerment thing or if it's a bad... Um, you know, put the toddler at the wheel of the car kind of feeling. But no, I shouldn't say that because it is... I know I can write a story. I've done it before. I'll do it again. No one can stop me. People can make me feel bad about it. They can hate it. 
but no one can stop me. So if I'm getting anxious or unhappy or worried about my career, about whether people like my stuff or not, I have to go back to what I have power over, and that is telling stories. So I encourage you to do the same. If you're not selling anything and it's getting you down, no one has taken any power away from you. A little bit of housekeeping around here. I will be attending the Nebulas next month in May in Anaheim. So if you're going there, please let me know. It would be neat to uh, have a meetup of some sort. I am not up for any awards, but I am accepting for Ursula Vernon T. Kingfisher if she wins. And seeing as how that's not a cheap trip to make, <laughs> um, I will say I have a Patreon. You can support it. Patreon.com slash Mighty where, where you will get early episodes, exclusive episodes, snippets of my writing, all sorts of stuff. That's Patreon.com slash Mighty This podcast's home is Merverse.com. And if you have any writing questions you want to tell me or you want to tell me about your latest rejections please do so at mightymer at gmail.com. You can find this podcast on any podcatcher that you enjoy using. I try to do it twice a week. I have another podcast called Ditch Diggers, where myself and Matt Wallace talk about the business of writing, and it's not clean, unlike this show. I am a writer, and I have books out. If you like science fiction, if you like murder mysteries... Check out Six Wakes or Station Eternity, or you can do pre-order and get Chaos Terminal, which is coming out in November. Is that all the shilling I have? I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mighty My socials will be in the show notes. All this will be in the show notes. But thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. If you do, if you can't support monetarily, leave a review or s send the episode to one of your friends who could use it, perhaps. The show's going to be changing up a little bit of formatting. I'm not quite sure how yet. I'm bad at making decisions. But you'll still be getting this show, and I'll still be doing a live stream. So like and subscribe, as the kids say, and I'll see you next time. And until then, you should be writing. I Should Be Writing is available to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives license. Theme music by John Anilio, art by Numbers Ninja, production by Summer Brooks, and hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor Who.